I find it astounding that we sit here today as we talk about redoing our education funding formula and the entire process is built on the financials of a school and what and 27 elements that should be funded and none of the process to date has been fo focused on outcomes performance student outcomes there's nothing in this bill that talks about measuring student growth in order to receive more money nor does it talk about funding the right items and showing that the outcomes actually uh, came out of funding those right items. This is all an input-based model. It is a complex, probably 350,000 data point model that has to be recalculated every single year. And for the taxpayers in my district who receive very little out of this, this bill, I'll be voting no. And here's why. Because for my taxpayers, this is one huge, massive, and sustaining bailout of Chicago Teacher Pension Fund. A massive and sustaining bailout of them. And their statistics are shameful. Over the last 17 years, they have gone to, from nearly 100% funding down to about 50% funding. And why is that? For 13 of those 17 years, they failed to put in money for the pensions. Negligible amount. Even last year, they shored the system $250 million. So as you can see, this is a cycle that's never going to get fixed. And instead, what this bill does, it demands that taxpayers around the state bail out Chicago Teacher Pension Fund. This, this is a very weedy type of process when you talk about their legacy pension fund and what it means. But I will tell you, I manipulated the formula myself. And one of the biggest metrics that changes how much more money you're going to get from the state was the legacy pension amount coming out of Chicago. And there's no guarantee that that amount's going to stay the same or an even amount. In fact, it is projected in the next 10 years that their pension uh, debt or their pension cost is going to be $1 billion per year. And who's going to pay for that? Through this formula, taxpayers around the state are going to pay for pensions, and it's not going to the classrooms. We've got to stop this. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about it, because when I look at data around the state that I've collected on all 852 school districts, I know that money's not always the answer. I'm going to give you a few examples. First of all, let's talk about Ford Heights. Ford Heights has the third largest high, highest spend per student. They spend $27,000 per kid, and their ready rate is 19%. 19% at ground level, at grade level. It's not about the money. It's about how is that money being used. And nothing in this formula says that you have to use money in a particular way. $27,000, we've already had this experiment. Spend more money, what's your results? Well, it's not very good, but let's take another example. Uh, let's look at Rich Township High School District. They spend 18,814 per kid. They have 9% of their students at grade level, 9%. How about Thornton, 19,830? They have 12% of their kids at grade level. Let's look at Homeward Flossmoor, $18,068, 18, 14% at grade level. How about Marengo? Marengo spends 17,897, 16% of their kids are at grade level. You can go around the state, district spending one and a half times the state average and the results are abysmal. Nothing in this bill is results oriented. Additionally, when we look across the state and we find out areas where uh, you can just do comparative studies on, on, on the same districts, where they're spending $2,000 less and getting better results. This bill is one massive bailout of Chicago. That's all this is. And it's on the backs of every other state taxpayer. You cannot afford this. In the next three years, we don't have another billion dollars to spend on education. And, enough, and districts are going to be held harmless. Please vote no. We can do better work. 
and we can fund students, not an educational monopoly controlled by, by lobbyists and bureaucrats.